Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, GE to build new turboprop engine in the Czech Republic, ATC reform could be more than fee-for-service, Bombardier C-Series going into full production. I'm Bree Cross, it's January 21st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It's been announced on the GE Reports blog that GE Aviation will build the GE 93 engine for Cessna clean sheet turboprop airplane in its Walter Aircraft Engine Factory in Prague. The company said it would use a portion of its $400 million investment in Europe to build its new turboprop development, test, and engine production headquarters in the Czech Republic. The center, which will employ more than 500 workers and engineers, will make the new engine for Textron and other customers beginning in 2020. According to GE's Brad Motier, the advanced turboprop called GE 93 burns 20% less fuel and produces 10% more power compared to other engines in its class. Textron said in announcing the Cessna advanced turboprop airplane that it would have a range of more than 1,500 nautical miles and fly at speeds above 280 knots. It's reported that Textron plans to have a single-engine turboprop article on display at EAA AirVenture 2016. With Congress preparing to consider FAA reauthorization legislation this session, a host of General Aviation Association leaders joined together to send letters to the House Transportation leaders underscoring, quote, real and long-standing concerns regarding a concept being pushed by some big airlines regarding air traffic control governance and funding. Specifically, the organization cited concerns over a proposal promoted by some big airlines for the creation of, quote, a new governance and funding model for our nation's aviation system based on systems in other parts of the world. The letter states in part, quote, the general aviation community has very real and long-standing concerns about foreign air traffic control models which go well beyond the user fee issue. These concerns are based on our operating experiences in foreign systems as well as thoughtful analysis about what those systems might look like in the United States. After the break, First Bombardier customer CS100 is structurally complete. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. According to Bombardier, their C-Series aircraft program has begun the full ramp-up to full production. It's reported the final assembly facility is fully equipped and production is progressing according to plan with aircraft in various stages of the build sequence. Additionally, Bombardier also confirmed that the CS-100 aircraft that is scheduled to be delivered to first operator Swiss International Airlines and inner service in the second quarter of 2016 is structurally complete. It's also reported that Swiss flight crews have started their CS-100 aircraft flight training in Mirabel, Quebec, where they will undergo intensive training to prepare for the route-proving flights they will operate alongside Bombardier's flight crew when the CS-100 route-proving aircraft flies to Europe in the coming weeks. This follows the completion of the North American Route Proving Program that included more than 35 cities. During the program, the CS-100 aircraft conducted flights using typical airline flight routings and operational procedures. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. However, today our report is not about a member of the Aero Community, it's about the Aero Community itself and how our Airborne Partnership Initiative fits into the picture. The Airborne Partnership Initiative, we call it the API, is a plan developed by ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to build a synergistic, industry-wide aviation aerospace news program. 
Our aim is to grow this program to include a significant portion, if not a majority, of the aviation world's pivotal organizations, interests, and viewpoints. ANN is an organization that lives and breathes within the realm of communication, and communication through our Airborne Unlimited online TV broadcasts is where our API members see the greatest benefit for their participation in the Airborne Partnership Initiative. Partners will have the ability to disseminate their near-media breaking news with each daily program, grow their outreach among their constituency and well beyond, and utilize the services of ANN and Aero TV staff to get it done. Our plan is to bypass the usual press releases and news coverage regarding companies or organizations and to enable our API members to provide innovative input for Airborne Unlimited subject content. This means your unique message will be translated into professionally produced programming by knowledgeable aviation and aerospace experts. For the first time, dedicated programming will be made available for the aviation and aerospace industries and organizations to have their stories accurately told by aviation and aerospace news media professionals. Your unique message will be heard and seen. After these messages, model aircraft enthusiasts support Wounded Warrior Project. Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> Through the efforts of modelers at approximately 235 AMA chartered clubs, the Academy of Model Aeronautics raised $92,000 to support the Wounded Warrior Project. AMA clubs have contributed a total of $268,000 to the Wounded Warrior Project since 2013. Coast Guard Air Station Astoria has received a yellow-painted MH-60 Jayhawk helicopter at its base in Warrington in celebration of 100 years of the Coast Guard aviation. The helicopter's color represents the paint scheme of their helicopters used in the late 1940s and early 1950s. If you're going to the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, load up on the Uber app just in case you need a helicopter ride. Uber and Airbus helicopters will be testing the on-demand ride concept with H-125 and H-130 aircraft at the festival. It seems flight now might want to look into the Uber Airbus model to avoid FAA bans. Aviation heritage groups and others in the National Aviation Heritage Area in Dayton, Ohio, have teamed up to support the opening of the National Museum of the United States Air Force's new building on June 8th. The new attraction has the potential to draw tourism to the area. A federal court granted AAR Airlift's group's motion to dismiss DynCorp's international complaint and granted DynCorp leave to file an amended complaint. DynCorp disagrees with the court's decision and is considering all legal options. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has issued a revised Special Airworthiness Information Bulletin for the Pratt & Whitney PW4000 engines following two reports of low-pressure turbine fourth-stage vane liberations. This has resulted in two engine failures with low-energy case uncontainment events on the Dash 94 engine model. In both cases, the pilots of the airplanes that suffered the engine failures made safe landings. This SAIB provides information on low-pressure turbine fourth-stage van fractures and lists service information intended to prevent further occurrences of vane weakening and possible engine failure. Among other actions, the SAIB is recommending that the low-pressure turbine four-stage vane airfoil should be inspected using a magnetoscope 
rather than a boroscope. The FAA recommends that the inspection be performed in compliance with the Pratt & Whitney CIR manual. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.